This is Mrs. O'Neill for Chapter 4, Section 3, Part 2, Calculating Average Atomic Mass. So in this section, that's what you're going to do. Figure out how to calculate the average atomic mass. And you're probably thinking to yourself, I know how to do average. You add everything up and divide by however many numbers there are. The problem is with atomic mass, um, it's not that easy of an average as you think. And we'll talk about the reasons why. So first of all, as a reminder, right, that atomic mass that's given to you on the periodic table is usually a decimal number. Why is it a decimal number? We already talked about how it equals the mass of all the atoms that make up that element. And remember, those are isotopes. So there are different isotopes per element that give us this average mass. And that's why there are decimal numbers, right, because it's an average of those isotopes. So, some periodic tables even have them listed that way as an average atomic mass. So again, some periodic tables are straight, hey, here's the atomic mass, some say still atomic weight, and then others actually even say average atomic mass. So, let's look a little closer at nitrogen and oxygen. So here's our symbol, and we know that again, remember how I, we wrote those symbols with the mass and the atomic number on the bottom. So this is 14 and seven for nitrogen and um, 15 and seven, right? So the atomic numbers are the same and the mass numbers, however, are different because of those are the two different isotopes. So here they give us our, we'll look a little closer, it's a little bit easier this way. Here we have our symbol of 14 and 15, but remember those are just those mass numbers rounded to a whole number, so here's our true number. But if we look here, 14 plus 15 divided by two, would probably give us something more like 14.5. And if we look at oxygen, we have 14, uh, excuse me, 15.9, all right, that's 16, 17, 18. So let's look at these whole numbers over here. If I take 15 plus 17 plus 18, divide by three, I'm gonna get something closer to 17, not 15.9. So like I said before, these are not like your normal average. What's the difference then? Well, did you notice that there's a column here that I haven't brought to your attention yet? Hmm, it's called the natural percent abundance. And this is what really is the kicker. So for nitrogen, let's look at this. We have 99% abundance. That means out of 100 atoms of nitrogen, 99.6 of them are going to be this nitrogen 14, and 0.37 of them are going to be this nitrogen 15. Huh. So maybe does that look a little bit different now? Does that look a little bit more clearer now? Does this make a little bit more sense? that the average atomic mass is not just based off of the masses, the isotopes masses, but how many there are. So again, if we look at oxygen, we have most, oh my goodness, almost 100%, 99% oxygen 16, then we have a little, little bit of oxygen 17, and a little bit more for oxygen 18. So our average atomic mass really looks like, huh, the one that has the most abundance, the isotope um, that, 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 that shows we have a lot of them. So that's why for chemists, it's not just a regular normal average like you're used to in math class. That's why I always say it seems like math class, but it really isn't. Because now we have to also take into consideration how much abundance per isotope. So there's a little bit more of a trick um, than the normal average you're talking about when we're, when we're going to calculate the average atomic mass. So let's look at hydrogen again. Pause the video, fill in the blanks, and then play to hear my words. So hydrogen is the most abundant element, and it actually has three isotopes. And because it's the most abundant element, the, his isotopes, hydrogen's isotopes, actually have names to them. Protium, deuterium, and tritium. Okay, that's how abundant this hydrogen uh, element is. So what do you think the one, the two, and the three represent? Hmm, another way to show the masses of those isotopes. So now we've seen how chemists, 
like to kind of play with our mind, right? They give us information in so many different ways. There are so many periodic tables out there that give us, that's why I wanted you to locate that key because every periodic table labels things, or I should say puts things in the boxes in a different way. And now this is an yet another way that atoms, or I should say chemists, like to show you the atoms and their masses. So sometimes it's just the symbol dash and then these numbers represent the masses of that isotope. I just thought this was a really cool periodic table because it shows us the relative abundance of each element in our universe. So again, you can see hydrogen has a big, big area followed by carbon and oxygen not too far behind. But then you see these like little tiny guys. So again, these elements, especially these guys are in the transition uh, metals and these weird guys uh, that are on the bottom uh, two rows, they don't have too much abundance in the universe. So that makes sense. There's very little of those. So again, if we look at hydrogen's isotopes, they're named, and notice again, here's our symbols that you're used to, but then notice how they look, the atomic structures of them. Again, all of them have one proton, all of them have one electron. Notice that protium has no neutrons, hydrogen has one, and um, uh, I'm sorry, hydrogen deuterium has one, and then tritium has uh, two. And how do we easily find the number of neutrons? Well, one minus one is zero. Two minus one is one. Three minus one is two. Hmm. Okay, so again, the atomic number gives us the number of protons, which gives us the number of electrons, and to find the number of neutrons, we're going to subtract. That's just a quick review. But I really like this picture to, to visually show you the three different isotopes of hydrogen. So now I believe you have to fill in the blanks of that uh, chart, so pause the video. And now let's look at this chart. So again, this is how it is symbolized. The atomic number, the number of protons, and the number of electrons. Hmm, that should look familiar. They're all the same. Remember that the atomic mass goes back to here, okay, one, two, three. Sometimes they'll give you that atomic mass, though, by decimals. Even the isotopes have a decimal for their atomic mass sometimes. And, of course, the number of neutrons, we're doing a little subtraction. But this is what I want you to focus on. When we talk about abundance, we're talking about if I collected 100 hydrogen atoms, 99.9% .9 of them would be... Um, hydrogen 1, 0 0.015 would be hydrogen 2, and of course there's a trace amount, I don't know, 0 0.0000125%, I don't know, okay? And we're not even really interested in that. So I have a question for you again, what is the atomic mass of hydrogen on your periodic table? It's probably 1.01. .01. So my next question, which you kind of already know the answer to, then why is it not a whole number? Again, we talked about how it's an average of the element's isotope's mass and abundance. That's going to be the trick, right? It's mass and abundance. So what does that mean in terms of the mathematics? So how we're going to calculate the average atomic mass is this. We're going to take each isotope's mass and multiply it by its abundance. Now, that abundance, however, can be given as a decimal, straight up decimal, but sometimes it's given to us as a percentage. So then we have to change that percent to a decimal, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Then we're going to take each of those numbers and add them up. So we're going to multiply and add. Hmm, a little different than the average you're used to. So some notes. We're going to do some checkpoints. When you get your answer, the average, the value that you get, should look like an average. So it should be between the masses of all the isotopes. However, the second checkpoint is that average, that number, that value should be closer to the isotope that has the highest percentage. So again, I want to remind you that if the abundance is given to us as a percent, we got to change it to a decimal. You know how to do that now, right? Move the decimal place two times to the left because you're really dividing by 100. And our units for average atomic mass is either going to be in grams or AMU, atomic mass unit, either one. So you'll, you'll see them both and recognize them both. 
So this is what it's going to look like, okay? And again, we'll do an example or two. But what's going to happen is however many isotopes there are, we're going to take its mass, we're going to multiply it by its abundance, and we're going to get a value. So after we get a number for each of those isotopes, we're going to add them up. And that's it. That's going to be our answer of that average atomic mass in grams or AMU. Okay, let's do an example problem. That's the easiest way to do this. So we have uh, calculate the average atomic mass of magnesium using the data for the three magnesium isotopes. Now let me remind you that here is the isotope's mass, but they're giving us a better mass to use. So we're going to use this mass and its abundance. The abundance is given to us as a decimal, woohoo, so we don't have to change it to one. So we're going to take, oh, I already brought that to your attention, right? So even though they give us the mass this way, we're going to use these masses for the isotopes. So we're going to take, and what I would suggest right here is just listen to what I have to say, then pause the video and write it down. So we're going to take the um, magnesium 24 mass times abundance, get a number. We're going to do the same thing for magnesium 25 and the same thing for magnesium 26. What do we do with all these numbers? Boom, we're going to add them all up. Once we add them all up, we get a value. And again, I like to round to two decimal places. Don't forget a unit of grams. So let's do a checkpoint. First checkpoint, does it look like an average? Is it between 24 and 26? Yes, it is. Is it closest to 24 because that's our highest abundance? Absolutely. So we did good. All right, so pause the video and kind of write all that information down. Now let's look at number two. Now see if you can maybe come up with an answer, do some manipulations, and then check your work. So number two, chlorine has two isotopes. Again, it gives us the mass, but it gives us a better mass to use. Uh-oh, now it's giving us percent. So because it's giving us a percent, we're going to change it to a decimal. So this is going to be 34.97 times 0.7577 and use all the numbers. Get a number. So this is going to be 36.97 times 0.2423. Get a number and add them up. So let's look, look at this. So again, use the actual mass that they give you. Change that percent to a decimal. And now did you get that number for number chlorine 35? How about for chlorine 37? Again, at this point, if you don't understand that, make sure you make a note of it or rewind and look at that first example. So now that I took the mass times abundance for each isotope, I got two numbers. What am I going to do to those two numbers? I'm going to add them up and I get that as an answer. And again, this time I just used AMU instead of grams. So let's do our checkpoints. Does it look like an average? Is it between 35 and 37? Absolutely. And since we have a lot more, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to change this. Since we have a lot more chlorine 35, is this number closer to chlorine 35 than 37? And it is. Bada bing, bada boom, we're done. So again, hopefully that makes sense. You're multiplying mass times abundance and then adding them up. Just remember with the abundance to change it to a decimal if it's uh, in a percentage. So pause the video, do the practice problems, then play the video to check your answers. Make sure again, if you need uh, any questions to uh, have them during class. So practice problem one, hopefully that makes sense. Did you come up with a why? Hopefully that makes sense. Number two, ooh, I gave you a lot of work here. And does this make sense? It's 83. So if I look here, my abundance, ooh, look at this, 57% 84, and it's closest to 84. That looks good. How about number three? Hopefully you got that as an answer. Again, grams or AMU, I'm happy with. And let's see here, uh, checkpoint. Um, we have uh, more 193s than 191s, and this is closer to 193 than it is 191. All right, here you go. Quickie quiz again. Now, before you actually calculate, can you do a good estimated guess as to which of these would be the average atomic mass knowing your hint, hint, hint abundance uh, of sulfur? Now, now that you have a guess in your mind, can you do the quick calculation? 
Did you get that? I'm hoping that you got it with a guess as well as a calculation because you have 90% of 32, so our average atomic mass should be closest to 32. All right, we'll see you in class.